Hello, I'm Janet Abbott from the Christchurch Art Gallery. Today I'd like to tell you about Michael Wolf's Tuffrey's Tin Can Ball, which is called Povi Christ Kiki, which means in Samoan, the Christchurch Ball. First of all, I'll give you a bit of a background on Michael, a short history of corned beef and the impact of corned beef on the Pacific, and then um, carry on about the ball. Michael was born in Wellington in 1966. His mother was Samoan and his father was Tahitian Cook Island. So you can see when Michael starts drawing on his heritage, he's part of that complex mix that makes up the Pacific. Two things shaped his childhood. Michael was dyslexic and didn't do so well at school, but he did do a lot of drawing. His mother worked in one of the government departments in Wellington and she brought home piles of that old computer paper that he could draw on. So he spent a lot of time doing that. The other thing that informed his art was a visit to Samoa when he was quite small to stay with the cousins. He tells of a culture shock of laying on a bed at night as a child with the geckos crawling across the walls, of the importance of the church in Samoa and his sudden immersion into Fa'a Samoa, um, the Samoan way. In 1988, he went to Otago School of Art, which had a very strong printmaking department. He said, I chose to major in printmaking at art school as it was my weakest subject, and I literally fell in love with the medium. My woodcuts, lithographs, intaglio etchings were released as limited edition pa uh, prints on paper and tapa cloth. As the themes in my art have evolved over the years, so has my practice across several genres. But I still remain a passionate printmaker. So that's what Michael has to say about his printmaking. After Otago, he continued his studies at the University of Hawaii in 1991. So Michael's work comes out of his passion for his Polynesian heritage. In it, he addresses social, political, ecological problems that face the islands, like beef and drift netting, rubbish, Christianity, and colonialism in its many forms. His prints, for instance, draw on traditional symbols like pili, which are gecko, or turtle, or from traditional art practices like Samoan tattoo, tatau, um, tapa cloth, weaving patterns, and the tibaibai of the Cook Islands. This brings us to the bulls. Michael has made a number of them. Pisupo Lua Afi at Te Papa was an early version made in 1994, and it was shown in Bottle Ocean in Wellington. Our one at the Christchurch Art Gallery, Povi Kreis Kiki, was made and purchased in 1999. So, uh, as I said, Povi is Samoan for beef cattle, and Christ Kiki is Christchurch. And the, the Wellington one, which is called Pisupo Lua Afi, Pisupo, which is literally pea soup, Oh, uh, is the name for tin corn beef, and sometimes the generic name for uh, canned fern, food in general. So the bowl is constructed from corn beef tins riveted together. So why has Michael used corn beef? Corn beef has become a staple food throughout the Pacific, replacing more environmentally friendly traditions of food production and gathering. Some sources say that pea soup was the first canned uh, can product to enter the Pacific um, and it became the generic name for tinned food. I heard a story that there was a bad day at the canning factory and all the corned beef was labelled pea soup. Rather than throw it away, they gave it to the Pacific nations as part of their commitment to give aid to the islands after World War II and the islands became hooked on it. We have to note at this point that corn beef, the corned beef market was huge Bully beef and hardtack biscuits were a staple war ration from the Boer War in 1899 until the end of World War II in 1945, and even a bit after. After World War II, no soldier ever wanted to see another tin of corned beef again. And in addition to that, the army needed a lot less rations. So the producers of corned beef found a new market, the Pacific and it was first given as aid. As far away as Papua New Guinea, it was airdropped into the tribes in the highlands who thought the gods were sending presents and started, called it, um, started a religion called cargo cult. It's well worth looking up. 
um, and they made fake airstrips in the bush to encourage the gods to supply airdrops of food that fell from the sky. And I always wonder whether they included the can openers. Back in the Pacific, pisupo and rice replaced fish and taru. This type of aid from countries such as the United States, New Zealand, and more recently, say, the cheap loans from China, um, is often a double-edged sword. After the free aid consignment stopped, they had to buy the tins of corned beef. The economics of buying food in an island are complex. Where do you get the overseas funds to pay for this food? You can sell some coconut. And Rarotongan oranges were big for a while. But they also sent their young people to New Zealand to work as cheap labour and send the money home. In this way, you lose food sovereignty. You no longer have control over production and consumption of your own food. And the traditions and skills are around gathering are lost. It wasn't simple, for example, to take a, a canoe out through the, the gap in the reef at the right tide, um, catch a very large fish in a canoe and bring it home. And some of the taro feed, uh, fields had been left untended for a long time. Health too was affected by the impact of this new diet. The very high salt and fat content was bad from island health. According to Michael Tuffrey on a video, one out of four older Samo Samoan women have diabetes, and that's just the beginning. Eating fresh fish and taro was better for everyone. There was an environmental impact of the tins as well. What do you do with all those cans on an island? Rubbish is a problem. Um, the island climate and land wasn't well suited to cattle. Introduced cattle impact the fragile island soil ecology and the poop goes into the Blue Lagoon. It's also a problem there with pig farming and um, don't even start me on disposable nappies. Another aspect of corned beef uh, was gifting. So corned beef has become an integral part of ceremonial gifting. Reciprocity and gifting are an essential part of island culture. And rather like bring a plate in New Zealand, the very large tins of corned beef that you may have seen at supermarkets of um, Pacific nations are one of the best gifts to give at marriage, funeral and coming of age ceremonies. A tin of corned beef has become an item of prestige in the culture. So these are some of the ideas and issues that Michael was touching on when he decided to make a ball out of uh, corned beef cans. So how was it made? Well, sadly, when I asked him, he said that the cans were straight from the factory and not recycled ones. Thus, our ball does not have the faint aroma of old cat food. So it's composed of these flat cans riveted together in the shape of a large ball. How was it used? Well, there's a performance element involved. And you can see that in the wheels um, under the legs, it's made to be wheeled along and um, various other parts of it move. Dance and song are essential to island culture. It's a matter of national pride that you can sing in tune and you can dance. Um, the various balls are on wheels and have been used in parades with Christmas lights on. Uh, and there are Christmas lights inside this ball. Fireworks, um, rockets launched out of their rear end with tail up. Um, and two bulls performed in a bullfight um, at the Asia Pacific train room in Brisbane, representing the clash of cultures. So there's a little bit more to this bull than just the standing one. And how does our bull relate to other art? Well, Michael also made a fish out of tuna, tuna cans. And there's a certain irony about Pacific nations who are surrounded by the sea buying in tins of fish. The tuna can work also talks about um, other nations overfishing in the Pacific and the dangers of drift netting and the stocks of fish going down. Um, how does it relate to other work? Well, um, think pop art, uh, think Andy Wall's soup cans, which were the Campbell soup cans um, shown on the canvas in multiple um, stacked on the canvas there. Uh, and bulls have appeared in lots of different bits of art. We've got um, a few bulls at the gallery. Bull on piano, for instance, Michael Parakofi outside. We've got Christabel Aiken's bull, and we've got lots of paintings with bulls as well. Picasso, uh, for instance, made a bull's head out of a bike seat for the head and handlebars for the, the horns. And um, Picasso liked a good bullfight. So as we've seen, 
Michael Perico, um, Michael Tuffrey's book uh, starts up many conversations around life in the island. Be it a small nation economy, uh, be it the environmental issues, or be it health. And it presents us with some insights into gifting and performance as important cultural practices in the islands. So that's today's Art Bite. Thank you very much.